This is a complete DaVinci Resolve iPad tutorial for beginners. This is one of the best iPad video editors out there and it packs an absolute punch. So we're gonna go through step by step how to edit videos on iPad with DaVinci Resolve so you'll be cutting like a pro in no time. All right, so I'm here now in DaVinci Resolve and if this is what you're seeing when it first opens up and you haven't made a new project yet, you wanna come down here to this little house, this little home button down here, and this is where we can access our project manager. So we can see all the projects that we've been working on. We've also got access to our cloud projects, network projects, if you're using them. But to get started with a new project, all we need to do is come down here to new project. We can then give this a name and hit create. So this is the main editing interface here in DaVinci Resolve on iPad. We're currently here on the cut page. There is also the color page. So right now this doesn't have all of the pages brought through from DaVinci Resolve on desktop. There are some workarounds and I'll have some links down in the description to help you with that. But we're just gonna focus on these two pages here as this is what's officially released right now. So the cut page is where you do all of your editing and everything. And the color page is where we will color grade and color correct our video. So coming back to our cut page here, we've got a few different options and things across the top here to add in transitions, titles, effects, to access your media, which you can do in this area here. Up here, we've got our playback window here. This is where we can preview and play playback our edit. There's some extra buttons at the top here, export, playback in full screen, and also the inspector. And these will make more sense as we go through if you haven't seen these before. We've got your playback controls here for previewing back your video. Down here, you've got your main editing timeline. This is where the magic happens. This is where we're actually going to be editing. Down the bottom left-hand corner here, we've got our undo, redo, and our delete buttons. And to access all of your settings, then you've got that button down the bottom here. This is where I would suggest that you start. So let's click on settings here. And this first page here, master settings, this is where we get to set up our project. So this is where we can specify our timeline resolution. You can see there's a bunch of different options in there. If you're on the free version like I am now, then you're limited up to UHD 4K. You can also pick custom if there's something you wanna create at a specific resolution. You've also got options in here for vertical resolutions if you wanna create portrait content too. So I'm just gonna leave this at 19, 20, 10, 80. I am gonna change the frame rate here to 25 to match the footage that I'm editing in this project. And I'm gonna leave the rest of the settings here as default. Now, if you are someone who likes to geek out on settings and everything, then by all means, click through each of these. Normally what you will find though, is that the default settings are gonna be right for most people. So I'm gonna come down here and hit save. And then from here, we wanna import our video footage. So I'm gonna come up to the top here. You can see we've got a button here, import media. So we can either tap on that to open that up. If you're using a connected trackpad or a mouse, you can right click and choose import media, or you can also long tap or long press on this area and you can access import media from there too. So this will let us import our files and everything from essentially the files app on your iPad. If you've got content that you wanna import from the photos area, then you can come up to this little button here and you can choose import from photos and we can access those files that way. So we're gonna bring in our primary footage here. I was gonna select on this and I'm also gonna bring in some B-roll clips here as well. And I'm gonna choose add to add those to our project. Now there's different ways that we can view these clips here. You can see I don't have too many at the moment, but if we had a lot of footage in here, then this is where you might wanna change up the layout. So we've got this drop down here. We can choose, we're currently on the metadata view. There's also a thumbnail view. There's also a list view. And there's also search functionality here as well if you wanna search through to find your clips. Again, if you've got a lot of them. I'm just gonna leave this here on thumbnail view for this one. So now that we've got our files here, the first thing we wanna do is import our primary video footage down into our timeline and start trimming it down. So I can just select and drag this clip down into our timeline here. And when I let go, that clip is now on our timeline. Now, because I'm recording my iPad screen here, I'm gonna mute the audio on this track just by hitting the little sound button here, just so we're not gonna hear that. But we can see straight away, we've got the clip down here. We can also start to see the audio waveforms along here, along the bottom. So you can see the sections where I start to talk. And this is gonna help you cut down your footage. Now we can actually make this a little bit bigger as well, hitting this button here, so that we can see this in greater detail. But in terms of moving around this area here, we can click and drag up here. 
to swipe left and right through our timeline. If you're on a trackpad, you can tap and swipe across. You can also click up the top here as well and drag this bar across to navigate through your project. With the left side being the start and the far right side being the absolute end of your project. So let's come back to the start of our project here and let's trim off the start of this file. Now, as with most video editing apps and tools, there's multiple ways that we could do this. We could grab this playback area here. We could scrub across to find where we want our clip to start. So around here, just before I start talking, we can then come over here to the pair of scissors to split that clip in two. You can see now we've got two clips here. We can select the first one here. We can press the trash can and that clip has been removed so that this clip now starts at this point, but it has actually left us with a filler clip, a blank clip. So we will want to delete that. Let's select on that and press the trash can and that's removed that gap as well. So right now, this is now the start of our video. So let's come across to the very end of our project. We can actually see again, looking at those audio waveforms down the bottom there, that there's a lot of extra stuff at the end here that we're not going to need. So we're gonna trim all of this off back to here where I finished talking, somewhere around here. We can again, select that clip. We can hit the scissors to split our clip in two. We can select the second one, hit the trash can, and that clip is gone. So our video is now finishing at this point. Now there's lots of other tools to help you speed up this process too. So let's say that we wanna remove this gap of silence here. We could again come across to where we want it to start. We could add a cut in our timeline or in our clip at that point. So you can see we've got two clips again. We could come over to here, add another cut, select this clip and delete it. There's nothing wrong with that but there's some other really cool ways that we could do this too. We do have the option to select this left clip here to come across to the edge of it here and we can tap and swipe to the left, press and hold and drag to the left. And you can see that we're making an adjustment to that clip. We're changing the end point on this clip. Now it has left us this gap here in the timeline too. So we could again hit the trash can and that's removed and that gap is gone. Or there's an amazing feature we can enable here. Let me undo that and undo again. We can come up here to this button here. We can press on this and we can turn ripple on. Now there's also quick access to turn that on and off here now too. So with that now on, let's do exactly the same thing. Let's press and drag and scroll back across and you can, you can see it's actually bringing our other clips along with it. So when I release here now, there's no gap added. Now there's an even faster way to do this as well. So let's say we wanna remove this next gap here. Let's again make a cut in our timeline or split at this point. And then let's scroll across to where we want that gap to be removed from. So about here. And with this clip selected, we can come up to this third button here. Let's press and hold on this. And we can choose trim end to the playhead. So this will trim the end of our clip, all of this stuff backwards here towards our playhead, which is that red line. So let's press on that. So you can see now with one button press or one tap, all of that has happened. And we can actually do this back the other way as well. So let's just say we had a cut in our timeline at this point here. We could then come across to where we want to remove that gap too. We could select our clip, come up here and choose trim start to playhead and it's trimmed back the other way. So there's some really cool features to allow you to trim down a whole lot of footage to something really, really manageable, really, really quickly in here using those features. So you wanna go ahead now, remove any bad takes, any mistakes, anything that you don't wanna have in your finished video project. And for this, if you are using a keyboard attached to your iPad, you can use Command B to blade or to split your clips. Now, if you are using a keyboard, you can also have direct access to those ripple delete left and right or trim start to playhead, trim end to playhead using Command Shift square bracket left and square bracket right. So let's say I wanted to trim off the end of this clip here. I can press Command Shift trim bracket right and that has happened. So now that we've got all of our bad takes and mistakes removed from our project here, if you wanna move any of these chunks of footage around, you can literally tap and press on them. You can pick them up and you can drag them across to where you want them, as they're essentially just chunks of footage at this point. But once you're happy with your primary footage in your timeline here, next up, we're gonna bring in any B-roll or overlay footage into your project. So again, if you need to import it, you can long tap or right click up here and choose import media. You will need to be up here again on this media tab. 
but I'm going to grab this clip here. Again, we can click and drag that down onto our timeline to bring the entire clip down. We can also double tap on it to open up a preview of it in this window here as well. And in this window, we can preview the clip. We also get these handles here where we can adjust the start time and the end time of our clip. So if we only need a small piece of it, we can actually select that up the top here just the section that we'd like. And then from there, we can drag that clip down into our timeline and it will just be that section that we had mapped out. As you can see, when you bring this down, it shows up as a layer on top of our primary footage. So this way we've still got all the spoken piece and everything happening in the background. And this footage here is just shown on top of that. Now these B-roll clips act just the same as our regular clips. We can select on them. We can adjust the start and end points by dragging those around. We can pick the clip up. We can move it around to where we need it. We could split it in two if we needed two sections from that clip in two different areas. And again, for this tutorial, I'm gonna mute the volume on this track. So all of our B-roll clips if they've got sound, we're not gonna hear it in here. So let's go up here, let's add in another clip. I'm gonna double tap on it to preview it here. Let's go through and find the section that we want, maybe starting from here. We can also press I on the keyboard if you do have a keyboard attached, or again, drag that in point back to this point. Let's scrub through this here, camera appears, maybe till about here. So we can press O on the keyboard to mark an out point. We've then got this clip marked out of the section that we want and we can drag that down to our timeline. And we can either keep stacking these video layers up or we can move across to where we want this video to actually be. So let's say down here. So at the start of this clip, maybe we brought in a bit much. Let's shorten that down a little bit. Let's grab the start here and slide that across. So our clip now starts at that point. So you wanna go through now and bring in any overlay clips or B-roll clips into your project. And then the next thing we're gonna do from here is add in any transitions or effects into our project. So we can come up the top here to transitions. You can see in here we get the choice of video transitions, audio transitions. There's also an area here for favorites too if you wanna save ones that you're using time and time again. So let's say that we wanna add this one here, additive dissolve. Now when we scrub over these, it's actually gonna give us a preview of what that looks like. So we can see here the additive dissolve. We've also got a blur dissolve, cross dissolve, and there's lots of different transitions and things in here. I'd say don't overdo this. This is an area where people can make their videos look really unprofessional, but I'm just gonna grab this additive dissolve here here, tap and hold and I'm going to drop it onto the start of our b-roll clip here and you can see that we get this little image that appears over the start of our clip so we're going to let that go there now and now if we hit play on this we can see that we've got that transition or that effect that's happened as that clip comes onto screen so it's not just a hard cut, it's transitioning on. So you can add them at the start of clips, you can add them at the end of clips, you can add them between two clips as well. So let's just grab this triangle one here, let's drop it down between the two clips. When we release, then that is applied. If we scrub through this now, you can see that we will have this effect happen. Now, because the clips here are so similar, it's very, very subtle. And normally on a project like this, this isn't something you would ever do where you're adding a transition between two shots that are essentially the same. So I'm gonna undo that now and remove that effect. What I would do instead and what we do with our YouTube videos to break up our shots a little bit is I'll end up zooming in on one of the clips. So I'll pick either the first one or the second one, it doesn't matter. I'll then come over here to Inspector and this is where we can access the properties for this clip. And again, there's a few different ways that we can do this, but a simple way is we can come up here to Zoom and we can increase this zoom level. So we can just tap and swipe on this to zoom in. And if we just scrub across this now, we've now got our shot here that's more zoomed in. And the second one here is like a zoomed out shot or the original shot. So it's a quick, easy way for you to jump in or punch in to make it feel like it was essentially a second camera or something but it can break it up for your viewers. Now, in order to really sell this effect and make it less jarring, you can try to position the person's eyes in a similar place and it's going to be less jarring. So we'll try to get this a little bit closer. Let's try around there. All right, so it's not perfect, but it is pretty close. So we can go ahead and we can add those effects or transitions onto our clips at this point. While we're here in this transform window as well, we do also have this dynamic zoom. So I'm gonna select this clip here. I'm gonna choose dynamic zoom and let's hit play on this one. And you can see it's added some movement to our clip here for us all by itself. So pretty awesome that we can add some motion or movement in our clips just with literally 
click of a button. In here as well, we've got the ability to speed up, slow down your clips. We can also stabilize your clips. There's lens correction functionality in here as well. So as you're going through this phase of adding effects and transitions and stuff, we can be adding those other things in here too. Once you're done adding your effects and transitions, next up, we're going to add any titles or text to our video. So I'm gonna come back to the start here, to our first clip. I'm gonna come up the top here to titles. And in here, there's a bunch of different presets and titles and things that we can use and customize up in our project. So we've got some basic ones up the top here. There's also some fusion titles, so some animated titles in here too, like this one here, digital glitch. To use them, again, we can just click and drag, bring them down to our project here. And we can see as we scrub through this now, it's got that glitch effect on it with two lines of text and they move across a little bit and then they glitch out at the end. As with any other clip, we can select this, we can adjust the start time, the end time, make it longer or shorter. We can pick it up, we can move it around, but we can also customize up this text here as well. So with the text selected, we can again come up here to inspector and this time we're gonna see settings in here for our text. So let's move this across so we can actually see our text here on screen. So it's showing us here large text and here's all the settings and everything for that. If we minimize this, we've also got small text here down below it. So we could edit the text here, Justin Brown, and let's change the large text primal video. We can choose our font. I'm just gonna choose Arial for this one. We can make it bigger or smaller here. Maybe we'll make it bold. And we could even change the color of it here if we'd like to as well. Now let's say we wanna make this a little bit smaller. We're currently here in this title tab. If we move across to settings, then we've got all of our transform settings that we had access to before. So we could adjust the zoom here to make it a little bit smaller, scale it out a bit, and we could adjust the Y position here to drop that down. So maybe something like, and if we scrub through this now, you can see we've got this text animation that happens, glitches on, moves across a little bit, and then glitches out. Really, really quick. I absolutely love how fast this is. So you wanna go through now, add in any text or titles into your video. From there, we're gonna add in any music and sound effects. So we wanna come back up the top here to media. Now where we go for music and sound effects for our YouTube videos is to art list and to epidemic sound. Those are my top two picks, hands down. But personally, if I'm editing on DaVinci Resolve on my iPad, the Epidemic Sound mobile app to help you find and download tracks quickly is awesome. So I've got a track here from Epidemic Sound. I'm gonna select that and choose open. You can see that that's shown up at the top here. We can then drag that down into our timeline as well. Now, normally with music tracks, you'll add them to the bottom here below your primary footage. So as with our other clips, we can select it, we can pick it up, we can move it around. So we wanna make sure it's starting at the start of our clip here. We can also expand this out to make it bigger as well. So press the little button here if we need to see those audio waveforms in more detail. Personally, I like to see the audio waveforms on the spoken piece, but we have the ability to add splits and cuts just the same as with any other clip and to move pieces around. So let's jump across towards the end of our video here. This is a great little preview up here of our entire timeline, but we can see here that our bottom track, our music track extends for much longer than our actual video footage. So we wanna trim that off. So let's get to the end of our clip here. We can then select this we can then use our command shift square bracket right to trim that end off or we could add a cut select it and delete it so at this point now that you've added in your music track depending on the video you're making you might want to play through you might want to adjust some of your edits or some of your cuts so that they match the beat and so that the video flows but we're also going to adjust our volume levels here too and the most important volume level to get set right first is your spoken piece in the video your narration your voiceover in this case, it's me talking. So what I would do here is I'd make sure that our music track or any sound effects or anything are muted first, which I've muted for this screen recording anyway. We then wanna to come to our first clip here in the timeline, and we wanna get the volume level set right on this section here first. So with this clip selected, we can come up here to inspector. Now, instead of being on the video settings here, we can now jump across to the audio settings here. So we have the ability to play through our edit here, ideally with headphones on so that you can hear this as well. But you can also monitor on the audio bars here what's happening. And you wanna set your volume level using this slider here, dragging it to the right to make it louder, dragging it to the left to make it quieter. Now, I love the way that they represent this here on the waveforms. You can see as I make it louder, they're actually giving you visual representation of that. 
And we can see here when it's gone too high or too loud, it's flatlining, it's hitting the top of this section. That shows you straight away that this audio is too loud. So we wanna back this off a little bit here so that it's not hitting that top section. So you can manually do this on a clip by clip basis, or you can select multiple clips by tapping and holding and drawing out a section to select the clips that you wanna edit. Or again, if you've got a keyboard, you can select a clip, hold down shift and select your clips from there. And then you can come back up the top here, you can make adjustments and that's going to apply to all of those clips. But there's also this amazing feature in here called Dialogue Leveler as well, which if you do have a video like this where there's someone speaking, then enabling this Dialogue Leveler, it's going to process your audio for it to make it sound really good, but also remove background noise in here too. So once you've got your main audio track level set right, from there, we're going to do your music and your sound effects. So again, we wanna select that bottom layer here and we've got our volume slider at the top here to make that adjustment. Now, this is personal preference, how loud you want your background music. With some videos, you might want them really loud, others really quiet. This is a creative thing, this is art. So you get to choose. So this is why I'd suggest you're playing back your clips here with headphones on so you get a good indication of what this is sounding like. But for us, generally, where we start with a background music track is around minus 30, and we'll go up or down a little bit from there, depending on the track. The last step then before we save and export our video is to add our color grades or color correction. Now this could be its own full course on its own. The tools that you've got access to here in DaVinci Resolve for this are literally pro grade level. So I'm gonna take you through at a beginner level here, what you can do to adjust your colors, but we'll have some other resources linked below to help you dive in further. So let's select the first clip here and then let's come across to the color page down the bottom here. So again, we've got a preview here of our edit. Up here, we can see all of our nodes and different effects and things that we've got applied. We can see each of our clips here in our timeline in sequence. And we've got access to our scopes and everything down the bottom here. Now, in order to switch between all the different tools, you wanna use this menu bar across here. Cause again, there's lots of different ways that you can do things. So your color wheels are a great place to start if you've never done this before but you've also got access to curves adjustments in here, to your color warper, your hue saturation, you've got all of your masking, your tracking, there's a lot in here. But in terms of making some color adjustments, let's come back here to the color wheels here. And we can see we've got these color wheels and adjustments for lift, gamma, gain, and offset. And for each one of these, we can either adjust as a whole using this bottom slider down the bottom, or we can actually click and drag and adjust our colors here on the wheel element. So the first place I'd start here, especially as a beginner, would be with these wheels down the bottom here. So we've got these sliders down the bottom of each, or we can actually control the individual color areas of our shot here using these wheels. So if we come to this lift area here, this is essentially going to adjust the dark areas of our shot. So I wanna grab this slider here and if we move it across to the right, you can see it brightens up those dark areas. And if we move it back the other way, it's gonna darken them off. So maybe something around there. Then we'll move to the next one across and do the same. So this would be our mid tones here. And then we'll jump to the third one here, which will be our brighter pieces. Now we can easily adjust the color temperature of our shot next as well with this temperature slider here. So we can tap on it and decrease the number and it's going to add more blue and more warmth to our shot. And if we increase this number, it's gonna add more orange or yellow or warmth to our shot. We can also adjust the tint next. So it's either gonna add more green or more pink again. And if we wanna add more contrast outside of using these sliders down here, then we can use this slider here to increase or decrease the amount of contrast. Now for each one of these areas that we adjusted for the brightness, we can also adjust the colors in here as well. So we can grab this little circle and this target here and we could move this around as well. So if we wanna add more orange and yellow, let's drag it towards the orange and yellow. You can see if we go too far, it really changes the shot. So we're talking about subtle movements here. Likewise, we wanna add more blue, we can drag this back towards the blue. So we're able to get some really granular adjustments in here. So right now these adjustments and things that we've made, we've only made those adjustments to this first clip here in our timeline. I'm gonna quickly jump across to another color graded clip here because there is an automatic adjustment here. Again, if you're someone who's a beginner and this is scaring you a bit right now, you might find that just hitting this little A button here and this automatic adjustment will either do what you need or get you closer to the output that you're looking for by pressing this up front. So you can see this does look very contrasty here, but it has made some adjustments. So this is kind of a before or an ungraded. 
this is an after. We could then make adjustments from here and adjust the contrast and tweak some of these things if we needed to. But I'm gonna go back to our first clip here. And the idea here is that once we've got one clip here looking the way that we like, we can actually apply this to the rest of our clips too. So if we tap and long press up here or right click, we can then choose grab still. That's essentially gonna save all of the effects and things that we've applied to this. We can come back up to gallery and we can see that image here, that look or that style here. And then whenever we want to apply this look to another clip, we could select an individual clip, come up here to this still and choose apply grade. And that's going to apply that there. But we can also again do it with multiple clips as well. So if we're selecting multiple clips here, we can then do the same right click, apply grade, and it's now applied to all of those clips. And we can do exactly the same with our B-roll and overlay footage here as well. We could make an automatic adjustment or we can manually dial this in to get it looking like how we'd want it. We can then grab that still and we can then apply that to other clips that we want to look the same. Now, when we jump back to the cut page here, we can see that all of those color grades and effects and things have been applied here already. So the last step then is to export to save out our video. So we wanna come up the top here to export. We can then confirm our timeline resolution, our frames per second that we did set at the start of our project. And again, if you wanna make changes to this, it's down here under settings in case you need to save out a different version, a different resolution. We wanna go up here to export. We can then choose if we want an H.264 master, a ProRes file, H.265, or there's presets in here for different platforms as well. So they have a YouTube preset here. I'm just going to choose H.264 master and hit export. It's then going to ask us where we want to save this out. So I'm just going to choose my iPad, maybe under downloads in this case, choose save. And that's going to go through and render out and save our video file to our iPad. Once that's done, it's a good idea to play back through that clip, make sure that everything is how you'd like it, and then your video is ready to share. Now that you're up to speed editing in DaVinci Resolve, if you want to find the best places to get music for your videos, I've got a video linked on screen for that. There's also a link to our free PDF download, which is the ultimate video editing process. This is something you can download and you can follow along when you're making your videos, knowing that you're using the best and most efficient process. As always, there's a bunch of links and resources down in the description to help you as well. I'll see you in the next one.